a fundamental layout that is used on a number of websites on the internet, for example, an e-commerce website or pretty much any website that displays a set of thumbnails, including YouTube, is the grid layout. And that is what we will build in this lesson. So let's go. We're going to be using a React Tailwind Next.js template that we created in a previous lesson, but you are free to bring in your own project. Right now, the homepage is rendering an empty now. So if I run this application and visit the browser, you can see that we get an empty page. We start off with an empty root div, and this is the div that we will be using to create the grid layout. Within the div, we have a number of children, and these are just placeholders for things that we want to display in a grid. Right now, they have different colors, they have a nice rounding and a nice shadow, and they have a minimum height of 50 pixels, just as a placeholder for some content that you might want to display within the grid items. We can focus on the root div and pretty much ignore the child divs for now as they are just placeholders. Right now, we get a decent vertical layout because each child div is a block element occupying its own line. We can convert the root div into a CSS grid by using the grid class utility provided by Tailwind. Additionally, in order to create three columns, we use the grid calls three utility. And now if we jump to the browser, we can see that our items are laid out in a grid where each row contains a maximum of three columns. Right now, all of the grid items are still squished together, but we can create some space between them quite easily with the gap property. For example, we can use the gap two utility provided by Tailwind to create a gap of two units between the individual grid items. Now, if you are curious about how the different units translate to actual pixel values within Tailwind, I have a lesson to the Tailwind fundamentals that I will leave in the video description. Now, gap two is creating a horizontal as well as a vertical spacing of two units. We can individually control the horizontal as well as the vertical spacing by using gap X for the horizontal spacing and gap Y for the vertical spacing. With this, you can see that the items are closer in the horizontal dimension, that is the X dimension, and a bit further in the vertical, that is the Y dimension. Another thing that you can do with your grid is to make it responsive. For example, on a tiny screen, you want a single column, and on a larger screen, you want three columns. Thinking responsive first, we can modify our default to be grid calls one, and then on SM and larger screens, we can change it to grid calls three. And now when we jump to the browser, we still get the three columns on a larger screen, but on a tiny screen, we get a single column. Now we could do a lot more customization for responsiveness, but let's stop there and now focus in on how we can customize the individual items within the grid. A common requirement is to have some items stand out more than the others. We can do that quite easily by increasing the column or the row spans of the individual items. For example, we can take the second item, which is orange, and make it take two columns by using the call span two utility. And now when we jump to the browser, you can see that the orange item is taking two columns and the remaining items have been pushed further down. For example, yellow is now on the second row. Now by default, items will automatically flow to the next available space within the grid. However, this can result in some empty spaces within the grid. For example, let's increase the call span for the orange item to be three instead of two. Now, because there are only two columns available after the first red item, this three column item is not going to fit over there and therefore it's going to move to its own row. However, this is resulting in an empty space and it would be great if we could take the yellow and the green items occupy that empty space and have the other remaining items flow up as required as well. And we can do that by changing the grid flow property. For example, we can set it to row dense and now the items will move up to any empty space to ensure that the rows are densely packed. Now, in addition to making some items take up multiple columns, another way that we can make items stand out is by them taking up multiple rows. And no surprise, just like there is a utility COL span, there is a utility row span, which can be used to expand an item to multiple rows. For example, here we are expanding the yellow item to be two rows by using row span two. And as you would expect, the yellow item is going to occupy two rows. And of course, we can combine row span as well as call span on a single item to make it even bigger. So now the yellow item is even bigger than before. And overall, we have a nice grid with some items occupying multiple columns, other items occupying multiple rows, and it's still densely packed. Now, traditionally, creating something like this would be quite involved, but thanks to modern CSS, specifically CSS grid, and in this particular case, utilities provided by Tailwind, it's quite easy to achieve. Thanks for joining me on this lesson. Smash that like and subscribe, turn your thoughts into comments, and I will see you in the next one.